grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That will be here. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. It is to say his passion of his passion and resurrection. For he was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his great, by his gracious and we may, by His grace, partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in His resurrection and in His life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with Your blessing. And we, the follow Christ, the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through Him lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples came near to Jerusalem to Bethany and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a coal tether which no one has ever sacked. And tie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The Master has need of it, and he will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a coat tethered and then a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are, you do, what are you doing in tying the coat? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the coat to Jesus, and putting their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our Father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever living God, you have an example of humanity for the human race to follow. Lord our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Gracious be granted that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering. And so bear his share in his resurrection. Who lives in reign with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well trained tongue that I may know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
Christ Jesus, though he was born in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
I shall not drink again the fruit of the body until the day when I drink it in, in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, And then I say to you, this very night before the car throws twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to the place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. And he advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible that the hour might pass by him. He said, Allah, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not by the will of you will. When he returned, he found him asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Do not keep watch for one hour. Watch and pray, you have another go test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, and they did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is being handed over his sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is with him. Then, while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd of swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you commanded against the rock with the swords of the clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching the temple area. Yet you did not arrest me. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. Then they led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with his with the guards warming himself at the fire. The chief priests of the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus to say, Have you no answer? Why are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power. Coming with the power of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. 
While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warning himself, she looked intently at him and said, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know or not, I neither know not understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. court. Then the cook, or the, the cock crowed. The maid saw him again to, and, and said to the bystanders, Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as the morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him, accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas, who was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man we call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had just uh, had Jesus scourged, handed over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole co cohort. They chose him in a purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with the reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. The president of the service, a passerby, Simon the Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. He gave him wine and drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his arms by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests and scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at three came over in three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. 
which is translated. Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. The day of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who stood facing him, saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and Moses, and Solomon. Those women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took it down, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in the tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Moses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Here we have reflected a on the passion of the Christ. For those who come on Good Friday, we will begin to reflect on the passion of John. Of course, this is in your meeting, we have read the, probably the shortest passion, with the fewest details, uh, the passion of St. Mark. Mark, of course, is the first gospel written. And so this account, uh, very succinct, but it certainly points out the truth, as do all of the accounts of the Passion, that Jesus died on the cross and rose again to give us a new life in the Spirit. And during this week, this is what we celebrate. Today we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And we take on to remind us of this. And then, of course, on Thursday, we celebrate the institution of the priesthood and the Eucharist. And Jesus is commissioning his disciples to take and eat, take and drink, and do this in memory of me. And, of course, on Good Friday, we celebrate the passion and death of Jesus. Holy Saturday, we have the great vigil of Easter, where we celebrate the, the whole uh, account of salvation history through the readings of that day, and then, of course, the renewal of baptismal promises and the celebration of the resurrection on Easter. We have just concluded the great 40 days of Lent, and starting on Sunday, we will celebrate the great 50 days of Easter. This is a time, of course, in which we recall the events of our salvation. So I encourage all of us to reflect deeply upon the mystery of salvation, what Jesus has done for us, and the great gift of eternal life that he has given to each of us because of the shedding of his blood on the cross. God entered the world to redeem it himself, taking on our human flesh and blood, becoming one of us, to die and to rise again. God took on our own human nature. And that is something significant for all of us to reflect on. So 
So today, as we celebrate the first event of Holy Week, the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, let us ask Jesus to give us the grace that we need during this week to once again truly appreciate the gift of what he has done for us in his passion, death, and resurrection. Together let us profess our faith. And we in one God, our Father and Lord, maker of heaven and earth, our hearts and physical and physical. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, the one of the Father and the Lord of the God of God, God of God, God of God, the 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 God of God, for us and for our salvation. Amen. 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 Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all the nations, and you that should have received this line of all for you. Through the body, under the hands, for us to become our spiritual leader. Blessed are you, Lord God, of
may become a body and a spirit in Christ. May he make the rest of the eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, your spouse, the blessed Apostle, the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints of his constant intercession in your presence, we rely on your daily help. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray our Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm the faith and charity of the Pilgrim Church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope, and Joseph our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire group of human beings for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family and you have sung before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself and all your children scattered throughout the world, who are part of brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you that they are passing from this life. With kind of to your kingdom, there we hope to the Lord forever, the fullness of your glory, who Christ our Lord, to be restored to all of us all that is good. With him and with him and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
Use number 504, unless you have a Thank you. 